Right, so today's class is uh, on uh, the opposition and support uh, by the Russian Church abroad or the opposition to Soviet Union, right? So, and Russian Church abroad uh, was founded uh, by Russian political emigrants. So it was uh, going without saying that uh, they wanted to come back uh, to their homeland without uh, communists. The communists, they were uh, major sort of, uh, how to say, enemies who stripped their, uh, of their homeland. And therefore, uh, all attempts to uh, fight against them were welcomed, uh, by, uh, were welcomed by the Russian church called uh, flag, right? And from here we see that Metropolitan Anthony of Kiev and Galich, the founder of the Russian Church abroad, uh, he uh, personally would give absolution of the scenes to the Russian uh, terrorists who would cross into the USSR and commit acts of terror against communists. But of course it was problematic because they sometimes have a, a, a assessed uh, things on the spot like, okay, let's say they stop a train and they check people's IDs and they found out they're communists, so they decide like shoot them, whatever. So, and how, how, why are you in position to make this decision? I mean, what kind of communists are they? Maybe they're still decent people. So, and this sort of demonization of communism, uh, which of course was a huge view by itself, but also sort of uh, uh, this uh, demonization, I would probably replace it with the word dehumanization because kind of, so it doesn't matter uh, if you are a communist, you cannot be a good person, but I mean, in reality, of course, things were more complex. And the Russian philosopher Ivan Ilyin in the 1920s, he came up with his uh, program treaty, with his program philosophical war about resistance to the evil by force. As a Zlusile, that's that was the name of his war. And he basically justified uh, justified uh, fight against uh, against uh, communists, against Bolsheviks, the white uh, army. And white army was heroic movement because those people who joined white army they did care about their homeland. That's I think important to emphasize. But historically, when we study any phenomenon, white armies included, we also should critically look at this. And critically, uh, there were uh, problems uh, uh, that I tried to mention that uh, in the Soviet Russia, uh, there may, not everyone could leave and not everyone should leave. So many people who remain there, they try to remain decent people, remain Christians. So, and uh, there are also, I'm sure, we're members of the party who are good people, so you cannot really just uh, you know, kill somebody because he, he is a communist, right? And as I was mentioning at the beginning, that uh, initially the Russian church tried to peacefully coexist with the Bolshevik regime, and that was the Bolshevik regime who didn't want to coexist with the Russian church. That was the problem, right? So, and the uh, Russian church, Russian church abroad flag felt betrayed by Western democracies very much. They really felt betrayed uh, by countries that uh, uh, established diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union, and they uh, were therefore were very, uh, how to say, uh, they were they were excited about uh, right wing uh, movements in Europe in the 1920s and 1930s like Italian fascists because they were very strong in their homeland and again they were religious officially and they were against uh, liberals and they were against communists so it was really something that was related with Russian church abroad and uh, in the same direction also uh, uh, the Hitler's regime that was uh, a regime that uh, was elected by German people, unfortunately, that's another illustration that democracy is not really uh, perfect, right? So Hitler came as, as a result of election in Germany. And uh, this regime actually uh, 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 
benefited the Russian Church abroad with providing a status of legal corporation. Remember how it was a big deal in Russia to obtain this status. So in Germany, Russian Church abroad dies, receives this status, and remains, uh, maintains this status until nowadays. And also, uh, with uh, state money, with Nazi money, a big Russian church was built in Berlin. And this church is now a Moscow Patriarchate Church, and Berlin Protection Church. And therefore, you can understand why Metropolitan Anastasia, the second uh, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, was grateful to the Nazi regime. And he came uh, to the sanctification of this uh, cathedral in 1938. And he uh, read uh, a, 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 a grateful address to, uh, uh, to the German state, which of course was Nazi state. And this address was not written by him, and it was mentioning that Russian people were looking for Hitler as their rescuer, and so on. And of course, he himself, you know, the appointed Anastasia, knowing him, knowing that he was an Anglophile, spent uh, years uh, in British control of Palestine, Palestine, he wouldn't say what I mean. So now it doesn't really sound well, but, but also the context is required. Why, while churches were destroyed in uh, the Soviet Union, in Germany a church was built. And you can say, well, it should have rejected, but I don't think it was realistic because it was still the legal regime of Germany, elected by people, and uh, as they didn't really publicize their agenda. But uh, some Russians did understand from earlier work of Hitler, like my camp, his uh, my struggle, where he was mentioning already about inferior status of Slavs, and he didn't treat them as equal to Germans. So there were a lot of stuff that you can you can uh, uh, analyze and see that it was very tolerable regime. So it's you really should you kind of keep blind eye, blind a blind eye on many things in order to idealize this regime. So that was something I don't think we should be proud of. But uh, mostly the Russian Church abroad found itself uh, within the country's control either by Nazi Germany or its uh, allies, like China was controlled by uh, mostly this time yeah, by, by either Japanese or uh, Japanese uh, satellite state like in Manchukuo, in Manchuria, right? And Central Europe all was uh, controlled by Nazi allies, and then Serbia was taken over in 1940 and so on. So very little of Russian church abroad remained outside of Nazi's controlled territory, that would be Britain and America and Australia. Other than that, there were no substantial territories, but uh, so substantial numbers of Russian church abroad members elsewhere. Right? And this trend continued after the war. Like, for instance, the Russian Church abroad members were very comfortable in South Africa. And I remember, I remember uh, well, there was a letter in 1960, there were huge racial conflicts in New York, right, like riots on the street and so on. And somebody sent a letter to Senate, Quarry, Grover Senate, actually, what do, you, what do you guys think about what's going on? And the response was, kind of heads off, you know, we are Russians, we don't really belong here. And that's what I, I saw recently, like Father John Weifer, he published, like, uh, if you look on the internet, a letter against the uh, sort of uh, Russia or Russia or how the prejudice. And some of our people, they were uncomfortable with this. They said, you know, why don't we speak about this? We should go from case to case. But I think we do need to speak for the things like that, to make statements like that, in order to make our position known. So if you go from case to case, then nobody really knows actually where, where you stand on this issue. So, and a similar situation, you know, as I mentioned regarding South Africa, was in South America, like in Paraguay. Uh, Paraguay didn't have any diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union. Communists were prohibited to enter the country, and that was the best scenario. So, right? It was, uh, there was a plateau, if you, you cross Paraná River, in the Paraguay, there was a statement, so communists are not allowed in this country. Like in Argentina, the so communists also, they were kind of, you know, 
tortured by the secret police and so on, but it's sort of it's none of our business. We don't really care about this. So therefore, it's my big question. So is this like Christ-like? Is it really sort of the way, right? We don't agree with them profoundly, but we still we still would like to show them Christ, uh, to show them mercy regardless of that, so that we can do better. Right, that's, that's basically what I meant uh, to say. The Russian Church of God always supported most conservative political uh, regimes and in America. Also, the Russian Church of God will always uh, want uh, Republicans, basically stronger Republicans. Uh, and and uh, that's another thing that gives you some you know, idea.